ABC 13. Convicted killer Yen Soaring is speaking out over a new docu-series on the infamous and brutal 1985 murders of Derek and Nancy Hasem in Bedford County. After first confessing he committed the crime alone, Soaring has spent the last 33 years proclaiming his innocence. He says he only confessed to save his then-girlfriend Elizabeth Hasem from the electric chair. The four-part Netflix docu-series, Till Murder Do Us Part, ends with the theory that both were there. I spoke with Zuring from Germany for an exclusive interview. He says the producers left out key information. I'd like to call your attention uh, to March the 30th, 1985. On that day, did you go to the home of Derek and Nancy Hasem and kill Mr. and Mrs. Hasem? No, I didn't. It was the trial of the century for a gruesome murder that took years to solve. To this day, it's left questions swirling about what actually happened the night Derek and Nancy Hasem were stabbed to death. To me, Soaring says the Netflix series didn't provide all the answers. I was really, really disappointed. Um, I had trusted these people to tell my story in what I had hoped would be fair and truthful manner and um, I feel like I didn't get that. For instance, the prosecution's main case against Soaring included type O blood found at the scene, his type, a bloody sock print, and his multiple confessions. Since then, a number of things have come to light. That includes the bombshell revelation in 2009 that state order DNA testing eliminated Soaring and the type O samples. The only way to call any of this into question is to say these samples have been mixed or contaminated and it doesn't mean anything. That is exactly what happened. Suggestions that more than one person's DNA might have been combined in those samples, which would skew the results. Enter forensic DNA expert and Liberty University professor Thomas McClintock. He, along with a member of the state forensics lab, took a more extensive look at the raw DNA data from the five samples in question. Just last year, they determined none of them were mixed, including one indicating an unknown male contributor. This is new information since my release. It happened just last summer. And I gave this to Netflix. They actually interviewed Tom McClintock, but they did not put this into the series, which I think is outrageous. Dr. McClintock confirms he spent several hours with the Netflix crew and was disappointed that finding was left out. And at the end of the day, there is not one single piece of forensic evidence that ties me to the crime scene. No fingerprints, no DNA. The hair in the sink is not my hair. The shoe print is too small to be mine. Uh, the sock print is up in the air. That sock print was shown to the jury with an overlay of Soaring's bare footprint, a print Soaring would only provide under court order. One juror later stated this was the turning point that led a split jury to a guilty verdict. And this, Mr. Soaring, is the very reason we didn't want to give you a footprint. It's Elizabeth's fingerprint in the house, and you still think I did it. I just, you know. Your blood type there as well, isn't it, Mr. Sorrell? 45% of the people have O-type blood. 45% of the people, half the population now, don't have O-type blood, and their footprint is there, and they admitted to doing this either. Now, did they, Mr. Sorrell? It's not my footprint. In reviewing the case, two forensics experts laid out in affidavits how comparing a bare footprint to a sock print is junk science for a number of reasons. Soaring says he also gave this to the producers. But here's the point here. You, you have a confession, which you say, you, you know, yes. was false, and a print that does look similar to yours. The, the forensic podiatrist in the Netflix series, you know, did another analysis of it and pointed to the sleigh of their first and second toe. No, it isn't a fact that that's your print. But you could deduce that it's so similar to yours yeah, that his confession also, was accurate. Yeah, yeah, right. And, but, but the thing is, right, it's also, there's, there's a footprint of Elizabeth's that is similar to that sock print. And there's a footprint of Julian Hasem's 
that is similar to that sake. With the splay between the... the... Uh, um, it, it, look, I didn't see that. That, 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 that is... That is that is the problem. That's that's why sock print analysis is not real science. Julian Hasem was ruled out as a suspect early on, but Hasem's other brother, Howard, did not rule out Elizabeth. He and another witness testified about what they saw her do as they were cleaning up the home. Soaring is disappointed that was left out as well. One of Elizabeth's brothers, Howard Hasem, and her mother's best friend, Annie Massey, observed how Elizabeth removed her shoe and put her own foot over that bloody sapra. Don't you think viewers ought to have known that? Hasem pleaded guilty to being an accessory, admitting she manipulated Soaring into killing her parents. The series producers tell me they stand by everything they left in or out based on what their own uh, uh, experts have already shown or disproven. Regarding the DNA, the producers say they learned the unknown male may actually be Mr. Hasem, who has no known blood sample. I've also been able to get to the lead investigator to weigh in on this case. Retired Sergeant Ricky Gardner wouldn't discuss any of Soaring's claims. He did tell me, though, he will go to his grave, convinced that Soaring committed the murders himself, and he can't understand why anyone would believe otherwise. What credibility does this man have? He has absolutely no credibility. He stands today a convicted two-time murderer of Mr. and Mrs. Hasem. And whoever can fall into that trap and believe all of his lies are very, very gullible, gullible people. Tonight on ABC 30. To get more videos and live coverage and local stories, Click to subscribe and to download our ABC 13 News app.